Hey ya, welcome to Shalefteo, a small town of about 30,000 people, about a nine hour drive north of Stockholm. Here in the sleepy town is what the true and authentic Sweden is like. And I'm pleased to share that with you in this video here today. I'm here this weekend attending a friend's very special wedding and have had the honor of experiencing a place that is very near and dear to his heart, their family cottage out in the Swedish countryside. Won't you come explore it with me? Skellefteå is the closest commercial airport with four flights daily, two in the morning and two in the afternoon. The cottage is about a 15 minute ride by taxi to a small village called Jogbole. I arrive at the family summer cottage built in the red and white Lapland style. Breakfast is on, Parisa Ray sausages sliced on the grill. Look at this fantastic spread. Melon, berries, salad. And this is a shrimp cheese that's spreadable. Yeah. And this one here is a, a ham cheese. This is and actually this reindeer. Is Cadro. Wow. This is reindeer cheese. Reindeer wow. cheese. Wow. I'm going to try some of this actually. That's awesome. And then is this is a, a, a specific flavor. Which oh, is that, regular, one is, that one is butter. Regular butter. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And then but this. the butter's really good. Yeah. Like it's spreadable, but it tastes like butter. Yum. Yeah. And is it this sausage? Yeah, Another it's sausage. A, a special kind called favicor. Ooh. Swedes love their granola with fin mjölk, which is like a kefir, and then a Swedish thin bread called jusmansbrot, spread with butter, vasterbotten cheese, a specialty of this region, and kale, a cod rose spread, which I've been told is as common to the Swedes as peanut butter is to North Americans. And as is traditional at summer houses, the meal is taken outside in the good weather. For dessert, we've stolen a bag of blonde goddess or mixed candy from the kids, of which a popular flavor is salty black licorice. Yeah, a little foreign to the North American palate, but Swedes love it. After breakfast, we head down to the beach for a little dip. This cute little man-made beach is built up in the winter by residents hauling sand in by the truckloads to shore up the muddy lake bank. Ugh, the water feels wonderful wading in. It's about 24 degrees Celsius this year because of the unseasonably warm weather. Very pleasant. Actually, the lake is about a foot more shallow than normal, another effect of the heat and subsequent drought. One of the neighbors actually ran his new boat aground at the beginning of the summer. There's a little sandbar that extends out into the lake as far as the eye can see. As you can see, that's not very uh, deep at all. Kids are after the ducks over there. A couple hundred meters down from the beach is a little dock where all the boats are moored. This time, we're taking the motorized platform out into the center of the lake where it's a bit deeper for some fishing and swimming. At one point, the big trend was to put a wood-burning sauna on these called Bastu Flotta and cruise while you steam. This is the perch killer. And these two, I think, should be good for pike. Nice. And also a can of fake worms. Yum. No real ones this year because of the drought. See you guys. Here's a good place to cast off for some awesome pike and perch. Although, the motor is probably scaring off the fish right now. The railing provides the perfect height for some dive bombing. Go to 
back to the dock. And enjoy the fantastic scenery along the way. Back on land. For the afternoon, we take an outing to a neighbor's organic dairy farm in the neighboring village of Clute Mark, about 30 minutes away. So interesting to see a real live farm operations. Inside the baby calves are raised until they are ready for commercial use. Then the adult cows get moved outside for some fresh air. The kids loved it, especially getting their hands slurped. Cows eat a lot, and the hay is stacked in these giant white bags. Being an organic dairy farm, the cows also have a ton of room to roam, and we go check out the paddocks. In addition to the cows, these farmers also raise other animals, including this pair of flashy peacocks. As a side business, they also raise emus, which can be farmed not only for their meat, but also their leather, feathers, and oils. Next to the emus is a whole warren of rabbits, big adult ones, and the cutest furry little bunnies, which the kids just adore. Adults too. On the way back to Yolgbole, it's a must to stop for fika. Coffee and pastries for the adults, popsicles for the kids. After a long eventful day, the gang relaxes with a game of keb, a combination of lawn bowling and horseshoes, to wind down the evening. Thanks for exploring and experiencing with me this very special culture. Tak for watching and until next time, peace.